Hey everyone, this is another video tutorial for parallel cryoelectron tomography or PACE TOMO. And in this video, I want to show you how to set up targets on a holy support film. And for that purpose, I've loaded a purified ribosome grid on ultra UFOIL. And here we see one of the squares. So to set the targets for a pattern like this, you use the same paste tomo select target script that you would use for, let's say, a lamella sample, but you have to change a few settings. So we're gonna keep guidance to true, so you get some windows that tell you what exactly to do. Although for the target pattern, this doesn't make too much of a difference. We're gonna set target by shift to false because we want to set the target by a pattern. So we're gonna set this to true and we're also gonna set a line to P to true. And that means that we're gonna use a whole reference in a buffer, in a serial EM buffer P for the alignments of the pattern, which makes it a lot easier. And then the size of the pattern is, determines the number of holes that will be collected by, by image shift. So if you choose one, it will be a three by three, so nine holes. Two will be 25 holes, five by five, and so on. So for this tutorial, let's just set it to a five by five pattern for now. Again, we can draw the beam, although this will only affect the first point as, you will, as you'll see. This is not so important for this. Okay, so before we start running the script, we should define the whole reference. And this hole here looks nice and clean. So let's center it. For a whole reference, it's important that you only have one full hole in the field of view. So what we're actually gonna do is, is we're gonna go to setup and we're gonna set it to half and square to restrict the field of view of our view images. Let's take another image and see if this is enough. You can see you barely see the edge of the other holes and by the looks of it, it's already nice and center. So we're just gonna save this image in buffer P. All right, since we also wanna make this hole our center, let's just reset the image shift so it will move the stage to this hole roughly. And then we're gonna run our select targets script. Once again, it reminds you to check the move stage for big mouse shift, well, to uncheck it, which we have done. And we choose the folder where all the tilt series and target pictures and associated files are saved. And we're gonna give it a name. So I'm just gonna call this five by five pattern. Then the next step is taking the view image and aligning it by comparing it to the whole reference. Of course, in this case, the whole is identical, so the alignment should work really well. We do see that we have uh, the beam diameter drawn in here. And the next step will be to define the rough grid vector. So for that, it will take a full scale view image and it will ask you to center the neighboring hole by dragging the image using the right mouse button and then hit B when finished. So to make sure that you drag it to the right hole, I made a little, <laughs> little graphic here, very high fidelity, of course. So we are centered on hole one right now and we wanna drag it to hole number two, which is this one in this case. And this doesn't have to be super precise, just get it roughly there and then it will actually align it again to the reference to be more precise. So hit B when done and let's see what happens next. All right, so from this it determined the vector A and it will assume that vector B of the grid is perpendicular to that vector. It will align it again and refine it by using the hole furthest away along that axis for your pattern. If you set it to a to a five by five pattern, it will go two holes down. If you set it to a, a nine by nine pattern, it will go four holes down. And as you can see, it found the holes nicely, even though the hole was broken and it refined the vectors. And after that, it set up all 25 targets and opened the, the graphical user interface here. And you can see on the top left, a list of all 25 targets. You can see that there's no target image file saved and of course no tilt series files yet. And you can see all the applied image shifts. And if you wanna skip a certain target, let's say because a hole was broken, for example, you could skip these targets either by selecting it and hit skip here or by just by right clicking in the plot. 
and then a plot you can see the orientation of the whole pattern to the tilt axis and what you can also see is that there are some orange points those are the geo points and those are automatically determined depending on your grid pattern and your vectors and you can use those to measure the geometry of your sample support. So this is especially useful for really large patterns because of course your support film is very rarely absolutely flat. So you can treat it as kind of a tilted plane similar to a lamella with a pre-tilt and a rotation. And that you can measure by measuring the, the focus at these different predetermined points and then fitting a plane towards the focus measured and calculating pre-tilt and rotation. You can also toggle the beam diameter again to make sure that these points are not overlapping with your actual targets that you want to collect on. And if you really want to, and you know you have space, you can actually add more geo points by hitting the middle mouse button on the plot here. And of course you can reset them again, which will delete all of them. Most of these options are very similar to the ones I showed already for the lamella target selection. So if you want to get a better idea about those options, go have a look at that video. But one option that was not available with the, the other types of target selection is this copy to acquire. And this allows you to copy this target pattern to different stage positions. Unfortunately, we cannot do it quite yet because what it will do, it will copy this pattern to every point in the navigator that already has the acquire mark, but no targets file associated with it. But let's just quickly go over these settings again. So if you want different tilt angles, start tilt, min tilt, max tilt, and the tilt step for different target areas, you can specify them here. The pre-tilt and rotation you can also specify for this pattern, but since you will be copying this pattern to different positions, I don't recommend giving it a fixed pre-tilt or rotation because at every square the support film might have slightly different geometries. All right, so let's close this window for now and it tells us we have 25 targets selected. And now we can go, let's say, at a grid map or a square map and we can add points and then we can set all these points to acquire or a subset of them. Let's say point number 30, there's a lot of junk on the square, so let's not collect this one. And then we're gonna go back to our original pattern text file here, and we're gonna run the select target script again. It will ask you the same question, sure. It will ask you to select the folder again, and then if it finds the target file in that folder, it will ask you if you want to edit the targets. In this case, we do want to edit these targets. It reloaded the geometry measure points too, in case you were worried about losing them before. And now we can run the copy acquire script. And this will make a few things. So it will go through all of your points. It will make physical copies of the target file and give them a slightly different name so you won't run into problems of having tilt series with the same name at different target points. It will actually go through them, let's scroll up here, and call them position one, position two, and position three. And in case your initial position was just a dummy, you can deselect the acquire later. Of course, we cannot do it right now because we have the target script still running. But this is stuff you can do after. And then you can just go to the navigator and acquire the items. Of course, this map is not quite aligned with the different magnifications, which is why the initial pattern ended up on the grid bar. But in practice, you would make sure that your whole grid map is actually aligned to your view magnification and record magnification. Either way, now we are done with this and we can close it. 25 targets were selected, perfect. And as I said, we can select which ones we want to acquire and which ones we don't want to acquire. But for the acquisition of a target pattern, I'll have a separate video explaining all the different settings of the actual acquisition script. And as always, if you have any issues or any bugs, please report them on the GitHub page under the issues section. And next up, you might want to watch the Paste Tomo acquisition tutorial video. Thank you so much.